All right, Miss Levy, one more story. I know you're probably very busy because Bob is a larger than life character. He's a mutant fucking height and all that to begin with. Um, so I can imagine he has enormous needs compared to like an average guy. It's like landing the giant kind of needs. You probably got to feed him giant portions. And I could just imagine. Plus, you know, the fame thing. He's, he's touched fame. He wears it. It's on him. So I imagine, you know, I know that a lot of these stars have special requests before performance. So I'm sure he probably has that kind of routine in his house, you know. And I, I don't blame him for that, you know. I, you can get away with it. <laughs> Let me tell you about this one story. It's sort of obscene, but it's not really obscene. But it is kind of graphic. All right, so it takes place in an apartment. <laughs> it's not that bad a story. We're going to have much detail. I only give detail like the girl was originally from, uh, I want to say Mississippi, but it's the same thing. But not Tennessee. She's from Tennessee. Her name is Jessica Humbird. Uh, I met her in Iowa. Uh, another one of those deals off the internet. So I go to meet her, and it was really interesting because the first thing she says, now she had seen me on webcam a hundred million times, you know, in the course of like a year or so. And then she says to me, as soon as I get off the bus, she goes, Oh, wow, you're not a, a, at all like what I expected. I'm really disappointed. But let's just get this thing over with. Nice start, right? So she takes me to her apartment, and I'm feeling really good about myself at this point. <laughs> And she says to me, so help me God in heaven, Jesus in heaven, and God, both of them, I believe are two separate entities, not the same trilogy thing. But anyway, let's not get into that. So she says, please, don't sit on the furniture, just sit like right over here on the floor. Never had that happen to me in my entire life. And I've been in the uh, bad graces of many people, and they've never said you're barred from sitting on the furniture. So I sit on the floor, because I'm a gentleman. And she starts making us drinks, Bloody Marys, which I never had before in my life. And like every drink, because I'm Irish, part Irish, part Italian, I like it instantly. So I'm like, this is really good. I sh I'll continue having these. And I have more and more. And I think I had like four or five. And there's like a lull in the conversation at this point. And she's just drifting, you know, looking around. And I'm looking around. I'm thinking, well... It's a good time to try to catch that bus back to New York. <laughs> After she packs me some of these Bloody Marys for the road. And she says, well, I don't know what we do now. So I said, can I ask you a question? She said, you want to have anal sex with me? This is like, you're not allowed on the furniture thing. I've never encountered this before. And I said, no, no, I just wanted to ask. She goes, you want to know if you can pee on me? Now, again, it's like the sitting on the floor thing. I'm flabbergasted, is whatever that word means. I know my parents use that word a lot, but I'm sure it applies. Um, <laughs> I said, no, I, I just want to know if there's any more alcohol. <laughs> and that's, that really happened. And then, I, let's go to the extended version of this. So by the end of the night, we're in bed together. This always happens. I don't know why. It's a mercy thing, I think. You know, if people want to see what it's like being with an animal, <laughs> I guess. It's like the whole Rosemary's baby experience. You know, she said, hey, why not? He looks like a savage. You know, maybe he'll do something that uh, is inappropriate. <laughs> Which it sounds like she does. But no, that really happens. That was like the amusing part of the story. Now, for me, the amusing part of the story is what happened later. After... Like three months, we decide this isn't working out because I can't maintain this level of, um, what is the opposite of sobriety? Where you're like intoxicated all the time in order for the relationship to work. <laughs> so we mutually agree this isn't working. So she's driving me back to the bus station and she says to me, I know you guys are, you probably want to have sex one last time. And I said, no, you know what would mean a lot to me? Now, Gene, I gotta go into a backstory here. One time we were eating in a Taco Bell in Iowa, and I'm kind of a modest guy, and I'm shy, I try not to draw attention to myself. Unlike this guy that has blue hair and a really cool shirt. I like the shirt. Um, I'm sitting there and I'm eating a burrito, and all of a sudden I hear this person yelling song lyrics out. 
singing impromptu like they're in a cast of fame. And I turn, and it just happens to be the girl that I'm with. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and why am I involved in it? <laughs> so she's singing a Tori Amos song. And it's like Cornflake Girl, I think it was, you know? Something about real, she hung with the Raisinettes or something. I don't know. She's just belting this fucking song out. And I'm like, what the fuck? And people are coming out of the kitchen of the Taco Bell to see what the fuck's going on. People online are laughing at us. I have a burrito it, it, half in my face, half on my fucking face. And I'm mortified because usually when I eat, I try to do, you know, when people get, you know, because I'm a fat guy. I mean, if, when you're overweight, you don't want people to even know you eat at all. You're like, oh, I don't eat. I barely ever eat. It's uh, born this way. You're embarrassed to eat, even if you're eating normal amounts of food, like a, t a fucking burrito. That's a whole meal for me because I, I know don't order more. Because you don't need it, you know? It just, again. So all, all these people staring at me, I'm like, oh, God, don't make it stop. And eventually it did. <laughs> and I, I never did get to finish the burrito because, you know, once the people are watching you, that's, that's it on the meal. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fucking done. So anyway, back to the story. So now we're, she's driving me to bus station so that I can return home a failure like I've done hundreds of times to my family saying, look, I can't make it in life. You win. You get me back again. It, that never went over big. So she says, I know, man. I don't, you know how guys are. You probably want to have sex one last time. And I said, you know, you know, it would be more, I really, it would mean more to me to remember you by if you could sing Tori Amos, China. So she starts singing that exact song. I'm not kidding. Loud. In a car with the windows up. And I'm listening to this. And this is, I'm saying to myself, oh God, make it stop. But I don't want it to stop because at the same time, I'm like, let this lesson burn into your brain. And she's like, China, all the way to New York. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I can't wait to be back in New York. <laughs> and that, that's a true story. All of it. I just thought I'd waste your time telling you it. <laughs>